I can't dance for shit, but I see what I want. I go after it, and my girl's alright. Treat me nice, ain't nothing but a woman puts out that light. So this is kind of a part two to an episode we did a long time ago. Um, the Milius episode? That's right, yes. We've uh, talked about these people before. Uh-huh. Yeah, we have a reoccurring cast of characters here. Yeah. Uh, hey, folks. Hey. This is Delusions of Granular, and uh, I'm I'm that guy. Ron. Yeah. It's JP. Ron. Hey, I'm JP. We said we weren't going to introduce ourselves anymore, but here we are. <laughs> we can't break the habit. <laughs> yeah, ourselves. son of a bitch. <laughs> um... Zoetrope. Zoe, Zo- Zoe trope. Zoe trope. Zoe trope. Zoe yeah. Trope. Uh, so Zoetrope. this is the this is the where we get granular with things, folks. Yeah. Sometimes we talk about Star Wars. Sometimes we get granular with things uh, connected to Star Wars. Just like the Matrix. Sometimes you're watching Star Wars, but when we watch Star Wars, sometimes we see past it, see through the code, the zeros and one. Sometimes you're watching Star Wars. Sometimes Star Wars is watching you. That's right. Uh, I thought you were going to say sometimes <laughs> you watch Star Wars, sometimes you're watching The Matrix. I was like, <laughs> that's true, Ron. <laughs> that's, that's, how do you know that? <laughs> uh, we haven't done a Matrix episode. We should probably I sit on that. I have been really, I've, every few years, I talked about it before on the podcast, every few years I fall down the Matrix hole. Yeah. You know, I, I go down the rabbit hole, I take the red pill, whatever. Um, I think what, I think the stumbling block there is I think we were going to do a Wachowski <clears throat> brothers episode. Oh, Ron, you don't have to. Uh, they were brothers for a while. Um, <laughs> Ron, I'm taking it back. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I start with uh, Jupiter ascending. Yeah. And that's as far as I get. I oh. get like I get like 20 minutes into that that movie, and I'm like, what? My I, mind uh, is erased. I think that we. I think we're overdue for Wyskowski sisters episode <laughs> yeah they're sisters now that's right sisters <laughs> <laughs> uh, um <laughs> okay well that's a that's as good a way of any to introduce the topic of tonight's episode that's right we're talking about well we're talking about francis ford coppola and his little dream his american dream i like how he, i like how it seems like on the podcast lately you have like a, a, a sub a sub agenda I do. of like taking all these directors down a notch. I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> with Francis Ford Coppola, I do definitely have that agenda. <laughs> okay, I mean, he's a large, gregarious person. I have nothing, not nothing against his looks whatsoever. Yeah. Well, I, I even enjoy his <laughs> wine on occasion. Ron, I'm not body shaming. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. American Zoetrope. Yes. Zoetrope. Mm-hmm. That's, I think, how you pronounce it. Zoetrope. Zoe. <laughs> Zoetrope. Zoetrope. <laughs> Zoetrope by James Luciano. <laughs> uh, trivia question? <laughs> yes. What is a Zoetrope? Uh, Zoetrope is actually one of those little devices not on, like, a Nickelodeon. Yeah. With, uh, it's got some, a series a of... spinny thing. Yeah, a series of images on the inside that are in sequence. And you kind of peer through a series of slits. Yes. And uh, that little moment where it flickers in between the slits yep. uh, creates the illusion that, say, a oh, horse is running. Motion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar to film. A, a, a movie. Yes. <laughs> wow. A movie picture, you might so, say. Yeah. So it, I, I, never really, I never really gave the word much uh, thought until right. I had to look it up. Yep. And realized I was pronouncing it wrong for many years. No. Um, so American Zoetrope mm-hmm. is it, it is really the dream that George Lucas and uh, Francis Ford Coppola had when uh, they got out of college. Well, and uh, well, not when they got out of college. But Coppola's a little older. Coppola is a little older. yeah, right. Um, but and they have kind of a strange dynamic, right? Um, to my understanding, Coppola is sort of. Both mentor and partner yes. with Lucas in yes. this uh, late sixties, early mid seventies period. Yeah, so this this story really starts around nineteen sixty nine. <laughs> you haven't listened to the last Burner. episode, have you? No. Ah, uh, you need to do yourself a favor and listen to Steve's last episode. Oh, okay. He, he there's a callback too. 
<laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that. That's all. Oh God, uh, Steve. The best. <laughs> Steve is yes, the only the only listener we have who actually pays attention to what we. <laughs> Do and say. You know, sometimes I feel like it's a three man, uh, three man show and audience. Well, you know. Well, well. Hey, hey, we're engaged. Yes. <laughs> um. So, 1969. Uh, yes. Uh, Francis Ford Coppola was a little bit older than Lucas. Lucas was uh, just starting out, um, having gone to USC. Right. Uh, where he learned. Uh, where he learned the art of cinema, cinema. from uh, from one Irving Kushner. Right. Yes. Who we also, also didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so they they basically, uh, although uh, this is the time of kind of anti-establishment, you know, down with the man, yeah. hippies, free yeah. love. Woohoo! Let's get away from Hollywood and start our own studio. Yeah. Right. Because we don't want to be tied down by the man. We right. want to do lots of drugs and make lots of movies. And, and, and to be fair, there actually is a legitimate studio system at this time to fight against. Yes. I mean, yes. There's, it's a legitimate thing where films aren't being made outside of the system that's been in existence since the 20s, 30s. Right. In right. some way, shape, or form. Right. And it was, it was viable to do this. Like, film uh, – the the – the machines, the, the, the equipment to make movies yes. was dropping in price. Right. So people could actually go, uh, much like today where you can actually just edit everything on your phone or your computer or whatever. Like back then, like the studios had kind of control over everything because everything, they could only – they were the only ones big enough to afford this equipment. Right. right? But the and the technicians to run it. Right. But the equipment was dropping in price mm -hmm. and the the – the students like George Lucas and Milius and Walter Murch, they knew how to run this stuff. So they didn't need the studio. They could buy it on their own and start their own studio away from Hollywood. Yeah. And, and just like today, um, you would have a situation where uh, young, educated, informed people were able to make a product that is actually uh, competitive because they're based on both these lower costs and the fact that they're able to just move and pivot faster. Right. Studio system, they have a certain way they do things. There's unions, there's scale. Right. And right. when you're working this more independent thing, you can kind of go wherever you want, man. Right, right. Yeah. So so, so Francis Ford Coppola, he uh, moves up to San Francisco and, and starts this studio, this American Zoetrope. Right? American Zoetrope. And I, I kid that it was all free love and drugs and that. Yeah. It wasn't. Oh. It was it was basically uh, it was like a commune for filmmakers, mm. but a really nerdy commune. So a cult, huh? So a it cult. was kind of a cult. <laughs> um, no drugs. Ah, no yeah, drugs. Cult. You yeah. would think like at this time, like drugs were like you know, especially in, all like, over California and the hippie yeah, like yeah. San Francisco. But no, Coppola is like no drugs. No drugs allowed at American Zoetrope. Okay. Right. Yeah, because he's like, he's like, we have all the wine we, we want. Have wine. Yeah. We have wine, but no, yeah. No, and pasta. No <laughs> so it's a real nerdy commune yes. for filmmakers. And that's what they, I mean, that's what they wanted us to be. Like, hey, come come to the studio and you can work on this film and we can work on your film and, you know, share the love. Yeah, yeah. Right? No one's doing any administrative tasks at all. Right, Yeah. right. So they set out to start this film studio, uh -huh. right? First film, Out the Gates, that's going to, really kind of bring in the money for all of this to happen thx 1138 oh yes <laughs> and i mean it's a it's a classic they play it every christmas it's yeah. a yeah <laughs> it's beloved so cash cash <laughs> you we just yes immediately francis ford coppola is in debt right because <laughs> this film tanked and it's ex it's expensive i mean yeah. for for the scale they're working on yeah. yeah yeah so the first film out the gates uh did not go as planned and like it ended up like was francis ford coppola ended up owing the studios like three hundred thousand dollars because of this film instead of like wanting to start the studio and be cut ties with the studios he ends up in debt because of this film right and this is a situation where um coppola actually has some connections he's made some films yeah he's been in the hollywood system yes so he's actually he knows what he's trying to escape. Yes, he's given yes. he's kind of given his money to this young protege. Yep, 
uh, GL. GL. And uh, it tanked. It tanked. It yeah. tanked bad. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's put all of our dreams and hopes into this one movie. This one brutally nihilistic cold, cold film. film. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that didn't work. Nope. <laughs> so so I'll give Ford some credit here. He uh, he kept going. Kept uh, okay. Let's try it again. Weird. When you said Ford, I was like Harrison Ford. Francis, is Francis Ford. Yeah, I forgot his middle name is Ford. Yeah. 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 Um. So they they decide. Hey, well, George, maybe he can make something a little bit more mm, audience friendly. Yeah. <laughs> something so, with humor. So George, not many of us have the experience of being shaved bald and. <laughs> Um, you know, chasing around, uh, being chased by silver cops. Yeah, and... I, I'm just. I guess it's just not a very universal experience. Yeah, um, not a, not a, not a family film. Yeah. Hey, you had a childhood, right? <laughs> yeah. So did everybody else. What if we talked yeah. about that a little? Bit? Why don't you make something with some yucks in it? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Remember? All right. Uh. So. So. George goes out and he makes uh, a movie we haven't really talked about. American Graffiti. American Graffiti. A very uh, Italian film. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was about George's childhood. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, essentially becomes happy days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Growing up in Modesto, California and cruising around. And, you know, we all know George Lucas was a gearhead and liked mm-hmm. cars. And, mm-hmm. you know, so this is kind of his his kind of like a semi-autobiography here of, you know, him growing up in Modesto, California. One last one last fun night before growing up. Yeah. You know? And you're right, it does become ha- you know, it's kind of the blueprint for Happy Days. Ron yeah. Howard's in it. Yep. Um, it also kind of reminds me a lot of uh, later filmmakers. Richard Linklater, I think, plays in this kind of space a lot. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so that that worked. That was that was good for American Zotrope, the studio. Right? We need to do an episode on that sometime. American Graffiti. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, meanwhile, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, George Lucas, they want to make Apocalypse Now, right. Vietnam film. Yes, right? and we talked about this in Milis episode. Milis is involved. Milis is involved. Mm-hmm. He actually started writing this in 1969. Yep. Right. Doesn't get made until 1979. So this film is in like seven or ten years of like pre-production. Yeah. Well, because nobody, and also nobody wants to fund it, right? Right. Because no one wants to fund what's essentially an anti-war movie or just showing the insane excesses of war yes. while it's going on. Right. 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 But George Lucas mm-hmm. was gonna. He wanted to direct it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 that didn't happen. Like there, this is like the studio is built on a lot of like things not working, right? Right? Like okay, George Lucas didn't want to wait that long to make the movie, so he goes off and makes his little Vietnam film, a little film called Star Wars. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and this is like I think this is a fact that a lot of people really gloss over because in I think it's important to stop here and make yeah. a little snapshot of who George Lucas is at this point. He's made THX 1138. Yeah. God, I almost tripped over those numbers. <laughs> it's like, it rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it really yeah. does. Which is <laughs> <laughs> an extremely cold, uh, very critical of a lot of societal norms. Yes. Uh, very cold film. Um, that's, that's kind of nihilistic, saying that a lot that, like, getting caught in this day to day routine is killing you. Like, you have to break free of a system. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, and then does this other kind of. You know, it's a more broadly appealing film, American Graffiti, but still has a lot of this kind of, I don't want to say angst, but almost this kind of like melancholy to it. Yeah. It's this last night. Yes. You know? Yes. It's a very, he's, he's a very artistic person at this point. You see those pictures of the young Maverick filmmaker George Lucas. Sure. And you get a picture of like, this is who this guy was. Yeah. And then he does, his next movie is going to be Apocalypse Now. Yeah. This movie about the excesses of war. Yes. And like, what that's all about. Uh, and it doesn't it doesn't ultimately work out. He makes Star Wars, and at that point, everyone's focus shifts because we've spent so many years thinking of George Lucas as like this creative genius who made Star Wars. Yeah. But before that, he literally is this real artist filmmaker. Yes. Where like yeah. it wouldn't be weird to say like Richard Linklater next to him. Right. You know. Right. Well, and, and the other thing, and 
I don't want to distract you from your no, point no, you were no. making, but like the other thing is like everybody like at this time just kind of felt like Francis Ford Coppola is going to be the king. He's going right. to be the king of the new Hollywood here, right? Mm-hmm. Like what he's doing, he's leading the way. He's the one that's a little bit older than the rest of us. He's the one that's going to be the new power in Hollywood, right? right? Yeah. But that doesn't work. Like it doesn't work out that way because George Lucas ends up making Star Wars. Right. Right. And Star Wars becomes incredibly popular and like it's almost like the rug is pulled out under from underneath Francis Ford Coppola. It's one of those stories that like from the outside, having so little access to real day to day details. Yeah. Like it's so easy to put like a, a real almost like tragedy story to it where like like you said, he's gonna be the new king of Hollywood, it's set up this way. Sure. But he has this heir apparent. Sure. That he's always kind of like right. grooming, right? Right. Right. And then the heir apparent goes on to become this wildly successful thing right. that is very consumeristic, right? And doesn't have the same values on some level, right? I mean, in hindsight, this all seems like, a, duh. Of course, it worked out this way, but it like Francis Ford Coppola is like he was hurting for money, right? Mm-hmm. Throughout most of his career, he's been like hurting for money because he's really wanted to be away from the studio system and funding the movies on his own, right? Right. And he – we talked about this in a couple episodes ago where he would take jobs for money, right? He would, yeah. He directed Captain EO. That wasn't his thing. He just needed the money. Right, right. right. He took on The Godfather. Why? He didn't want to make that movie. He needed the money. Yeah. Ended up being a huge success. Oh, yeah, a cinema classic. Another one we should do an episode on someday. Yeah, totally, right? But he didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He just wanted to, you know, he needed, it was a paycheck for him. Right. Right. He wanted to do Apocalypse Now, just like George Lucas did. George Lucas, you know, ended up making Star Wars. Francis Ford Coppola goes off and makes Apocalypse Now. Nobody knew that it was going to drive him half insane. Right. Right? Right, right, like, right. He didn't plan on, like, he was going to be the king of Hollywood. But he makes this movie, goes off into the jungle, and comes out with, you know, literally, doesn't he try to kill himself in the jungle? Uh, he, I can't remember if it was an actual suicide attempt, but, uh, I mean, he gets pretty out there. He gets pretty out there. Yeah. You know, like I mean, his, and it, it, definitely see the uh, documentary Heart of Darkness once again. Yeah, his main sort of, actor, like, gets... Has a heart attack from yeah. overdosing on cocaine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh... It's just the the problems they have are myriad. The helicopters keep getting called away to fight real rebellions. Right. Some yeah. th- third world yeah. island. Like, like. And all of this is like in the background. They're like, but we just want to create the studio away from Hollywood and be on our own. And they keep like George does it. Right. Right. He goes off and does Lucas Lucasfilm. Yeah. Right. Kind of takes takes Francis Ford Coppola's idea. Yeah. Right. And goes off and does it. Whereas Francis Ford Coppola kind of struggles throughout all of this because of everything that happens. Right. So, sorry. Going going back to where I was going there, Francis Ford Coppola was always cited as saying, you know, like, Star Wars is like the worst thing that happened because yeah. we never got to see what, what this great artist, George Lucas, was going to become. Right. Um, now, meanwhile, so he doesn't, George Lucas doesn't do Star Wars, uh, or doesn't do, sorry, Apocalypse, Apocalypse Now. Man. He instead does Star Wars. And you'd said kind of quickly that like that was his since he couldn't get any funding for apocalypse now yeah he's like oh i'll just flip the script and make it a fantasy kind of story but still be the basic same story about rebels right. fighting right a big giant empire yeah the rebels being the vietnamese yeah. yeah and it's like when you when the first time someone told me that it just blew my mind because right. it's like that's so true yeah like this is this is the story and it kind of affects even The Force Awakens. Oh, totally. Because we get talking about, like, a terrorism element to Force Awakens. And, like, when you see that, and you see this, like, young, brazen filmmaker, George Lucas, he ends his shot, the ends the, the movie with a shot crib from that Nazi propaganda film. Uh, I can't remember the name of it is off the top of my head. Right. Um, but he's just, like, that's very edgy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's telling this whole, like, we're the evil empire. <laughs> Who can, like, destroy nations with, like, fire from the sky. Right. And, like, there's these, like, young plucky rebels who are trying to defeat us. Like, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it, it, I wonder how Star Wars would really play out today 
you know, like yeah. with like you know terrace cells and you know it's like because I mean like the force I mean, the force awakens when we we've talked about that too. Not to get way off topic. No, right. But like the resistance isn't the same as the uh, rebellion. Well, yeah, not the, re- the the republic. The republic, right? They're like, a, they're a, a f- they're a fringe kind of seems yeah. like a sort of terrorist cell, <laughs> right? That's like right. kind of kind of like um, accepted, right? Sort of. They're not like like the. It doesn't seem like the republic wasn't like actively fighting them, right? But they're like, and and to be fair, they kind of gloss over a lot of that. Like, yeah. they gloss over, like, who's really the resistance? And yeah. who's really the rebellion? Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Like, oh, okay, these are the good guys because they're in white, and the bad guys are in black, and yeah. just go along with that. Like, yeah, but there's, like, there's, there's way more depth underneath there. Yeah, I wonder if, like, Star Wars was retold with, like, you know, you're white Darth Vader that you're always dreaming of, uh, right? Yes. Like, what Six if, what if the bad guys actually were dressed in white and the bad guy, the the good guys were dressed in black? And, yeah. you, know, like, you know, like, if there was a little bit more evil... And well, you like, know, Poe's got that black X-Wing. That's true. So That's true. Okay. Anyway, so we're back off to topic. It. Yeah, so, so... They so, diverge at this point. Yes. He does not make Apocalypse now. Francois Coppola does a few years later. Right. Yeah. He also makes uh, Godfather 2. Yes. Right? Which is one of the funny things about Godfather 2 I always think about. It's like one of the first movies, if not the first, that's really... It's title part two. Right. You know? Because that becomes like how the movie, how sequels get titled for years after that. Right. We're he only also, recently getting out of that. He also makes a very important film um, between the Godfather movies. Right. The Conversation. Yeah. Great right? movie. The great Conversation. Great. Now, uh, yes. The Conversation... This is where Walter Murch comes in. Walter Murch being tied to THX, THX one three eight, right? Because he did. He, Walter Murch is basically sound design slash editor. Yes, right? he finishes the conversation for Francis Ford Coppola. Another thing about Francis Ford Coppola, he kind of uh, he gets. This is my personal opinion of him. Um, he gets bored on projects. Seems, kind of, yeah, he yeah. loses interest on him. He's Sometimes kind of loses him focus. Off. Yeah, yeah. He kind of hands him off. So he handed the conversation off to Fr- Walter Murch. Walter Murch being a sound editor, that film is known for its sound. Oh my god, right? layered, layered, layered yeah. sounds. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's an important film. Uh, you know, two. It's an. It's truly an American zoetrope film without mm-hmm. studio involvement. Right. Right. Um, and it's important that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now. What's interesting about this is okay, so the the dream was no studio influence, right? You can go in, make your you know, filmmakers can come to American Zotrope. make your tone poems, make, make your, your little make, art, make your films, do whatever you want to do, right? Yeah, yeah, right. But also, this whole idea of like filmmakers working on other. Each filmmaker gets to you know you have other filmmakers touching your project, right? right? Vim Vendors, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, it feels right. Um, he comes to American Zotrope, wants to make a movie, right? And uh, it's uh, he's kind of turned off by the whole thing. He's like, "What do you mean? Other people are going to be touching my film? What do you mean? What do Everyone's you mean? going to be touching my yeah. film? My film? Yeah, he didn't he didn't care for it. Yeah, and." and I bring this up because all of a sudden it feels like, oh, studio involvement. Right. right? Yeah. American Zotrope slowly becomes the thing that they didn't want to become. Just like Anakin. Just like Anakin. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so like, yeah. just like just like George Lucas kind of becoming the evil empire that – Right. Like, like it's kind of it, – it's interesting that like this, this, this American dream that these directors have – uh, in in large and small portions, like they became the thing that they hated. Yeah, it always kind of ends up going back to this uh, kind of Ford style assembly line. Yeah, you know where it yeah. kind of always comes down to becoming this like, I mean, on some level, exploitive. Sure. Like, I mean, on from a certain point of view. From a certain point, point, of, point of view, exploitive. <laughs> a uh-huh. certain point of view. <laughs> 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 so, um, also, uh, non sequitur here, but yes. uh, Walter Murch also apparently directed Return to Oz. 
Oh, yeah. Which is extremely dark. That's really dark, What yeah. a crazy movie. Yeah. That's a reason to do that movie someday. There you podcast. go. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll have to do like a... We'll we have to do Labyrinth and Howard the Duck and yep. maybe Return to Oz. We've got a string of awesome episodes coming up. <laughs> you also picked an episode of The Clone Wars, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I knew that. Yeah, I think, it's, I think we I talked think about we talked it at some point. That. God, it's been you. How long have we been doing this podcast? Oh, God. Decades. Decades. <laughs> long time. Long time. Oh, okay. Um, so, so, Francis Ford Coppola, American Zotrope. Still exists. You can go there. Yeah, they used to have a, a like a, an art kind of uh, grant yeah. every year. I don't know if they yeah. still have that. I think it's actually a coffee shop too. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I think you can like literally like if you uh, like Google the building, mm-hmm. like the front of it is this coffee shop, American huh. Zotro Cafe. Funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like I feel like you said, this is kind of like part of a series as we can yeah. keep kind of um exploring this past of george lucas and these like associations i think this one's a big one i think this is a big one because I, I, we've touched on it throughout the episode but basically george lucas became the success that francis ford coppola everyone thought was going to be yeah right and not to say coppola was any slouch i mean no good lord <laughs> but like I mean, Francis Ford Coppola still making films. Right? I mean, like, if you're not the guy who made Star Wars, I mean, a good runner-up is to be the guy who made Godfather 1 and 2. <laughs> yes. But he's but which, also still... He's also like, the guy who made Godfather 3. <laughs> well. And George Lucas became the guy who made the prequels. Right. And but they the, both have giant ranches. But the point I'm trying oh, sorry. to... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is George Lucas, uh, although, you know has gone through like personal problems that you know has led him to struggle to, to finance yeah. movies yeah like francis Ford coppola made apocalypse now godfather one two and three yep. you know the conversation all these movies yes. the outsiders you know like he's made all these films and to this day still like struggles to raise money to make films well, yeah, but he he achieved his dream. I mean, the past several movies he made, it's been completely out of the system. Yeah, nobody has signed off on him. Right, like he's it's like he, right, he does it all himself. Right. Uh, he he's making the films that George Lucas always talks about making. It's true, <laughs> and just like George Lucas says, nobody sees him. <laughs> yeah, like, nobody sees him. You know, um, I, I think. I think we're probably going to keep coming back to the topic of Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. Because part of me wants to do like a, a series on him almost. Like sure. his early films, his middle films, and then – because I kind of like a lot of it. And I've never seen any of the newer stuff. I've never like seen Twix, anything. Like Twix, Youth Without yeah. Youth. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, oh, I didn't know he made Tucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, right? yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm always, I always forget he made The Outsiders. Yeah. Yeah, Which is Rumble such an Fish. astounding film. Right, like, right. Yeah. Because he's made movies for money. And don't forget Dracula, the 90s. Yeah, right, right. But he's, Which is very divisive. But he takes, he takes movies on for money. Yeah. Like, that doesn't mean that they're no less artful. Right. But they're not, in his mind, I don't think he's like, well, th- I, made, I made these movies that are a real passion, and I made these other movies that are just like a paycheck. Yeah, he's got his A pictures, and yeah. he's got his B pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that. I think that pretty much covers off on what I wanted to talk about with zoetrope. Yeah, and I think, I mean, once again, uh, I think we could probably go deeper in the whole zoetrope thing. I think there's a lot of uh, other people involved yes. in the whole thing. Yes. Uh, a lot of very interesting uh, characters, a lot of interesting stories. And once we read a couple more books, we'll probably uh, come back to it. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe even do more movies of Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. 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 All right, folks. Well, that's a, a tangentially Star Wars related episode, but uh, yeah, that's what we do here on Delusions of Granular. We get tran- tan- tangential. We get tan- tan- tangential yours. Yeah, Delusions of Tangents. <laughs> oh. All right, my folks. Goodness. <laughs> on that note, stay granular.